You probably already know about Finland's excellent long-distance night trains and their great double-decker sleeper cars complete with in-suite showers. But I'm not gonna show you any of that today, as we are instead checking out Finland's lesser-known old blue sleeper cars from 1978. So join me on this trip to find out if these carriages are up to par with Finland's other excellent trains, as we take the 12-hour overnight train up to Tornio. Our journey starts at Helsinki's main railway station, located right in the heart of the Finnish capital. The current station building dates back to 1919 with its iconic lantern bearer statues and the clock tower. But it's not only on the outside the station looks great. So let's sit inside and let me show you why this is also one of my favorite railway stations in Europe. I mean, just look at these chandeliers. I mean, that must be one of the prettiest Burger Kings out there. Anyway, continuing straight ahead is where you'll find the platforms. We are catching Pika Yuna or Express Train 269 to Kolari, which will be departing from track number 8 tonight. Out by the departure board, the station features even more shops. And inside the station, you will also find a ticket office. These are however increasingly rare, with VR having the internet and its ticket machines doing most of the work these days. And in the station's basement, you will find these modern luggage storage facilities. These are a great place to leave your bags after checking out from the hotel in the morning, so you can explore the city back free before catching the night train. Not hidden away in a basement is the train tracks, so let's go and catch our train. Helsinki has an extensive commuter rail network served by these units and the newer Stadler Flirt trains, which you will most likely use if you arrive into Helsinki and catch the excellent airport rail link. And of course, also the great double-decker trains, used on long-distance services across the country. But we are of course not here to catch any of those. Our train is being reversed into the platform roughly 15 minutes before departure, and consists of a mix of double-decker carriages with sleeper cabins, a dining car and what we are here to check out tonight, the lesser known blue carriage sleeper cars. Tonight's train will initially be hauled by a SR2 class locomotive built by SLM ABB and are capable of speeds of up to 210 km per hour. Right, let's head on board. Unlike VR's double decker carriages, there's a few small steps up into the carriage, so if you have large luggage it might be best to try and book yourself in one of the double deckers. Your cabin is indicated on your ticket, and you just go and head there yourself. Here's where I'll be spending the night. Remember to grab the keycard, which you will find sitting in the door. And as I was traveling alone, I folded up the middle bunk to make a little more space. And with an on-time departure, we are now making our way north for the next 13 hours. The first few minutes is spent navigating the railway junctions north of Helsinki's railway station, running past the famous Linnanmaki amusement park, before arriving into Pasila, an important shoulder station where the lines west towards Turku diverges from the main line north. And interestingly, our train is actually gonna stop at Pasila twice. Well, kinda. VR also offer the ability to bring your car with the train, and in Helsinki, the loading station is located a bit north of Pasila. And here we see the car carrier wagons ready to be shunted onto our train.
So while the carriages are being added to the back of the train, we just sit still for a bit. With the train now fully assembled, we're ready to move again. And we have now rejoined the main line, and I think it's about time I'll show you the route map for today's journey. We are on board Pika Yuna 269, which leaves from Helsinki, making stops at Pasila, Tikorila, Rihimaki, Hamenlina, Tampere, Senajoki, Kokkola, Yuliviska, Ulu, Kimi, before arriving into Tornio. After Tornio, the train continues with a few more stops further north to Kolari. The journey to Tornio is scheduled to take 11 hours 52 minutes to cover 811 kilometers, giving the train an average speed of 68 kilometers per hour. As the light is quickly fading, it's time to check out the cabin where we'll be staying the night. The cabin comes with coat hooks, as well as a ladder to help you get into the top bunks. Luggage storage can be found above the door. As you can see, the cabin can be made up with up to three bunks. Each comes with a small reading light, as well as a storage pocket. Over here you will find a small table, as well as a wash basin. Next to the wash basin, you will also find two keycards. Make sure to bring them if you leave the cabin. This is the only power socket, so make sure to bring a power bank. The cabin also comes with water, as well as these cups. And some more luggage storage up here. So honestly, despite their age, they seem to be in a good state. And now as it's getting dark, let's find out if they offer a good night's sleep. Good morning from Oulu. I've had a great night of sleep. These carriages are super quiet and the beds are comfortable. I can struggle a bit to sleep on night trains from time to time, but on this one I was able to sleep mostly uninterrupted. If you're a bit of a train geek like me, you'll want to get off the train here in Oulu. As our electric locomotive is swapped here. And is swapped for diesel traction, as the line to Kulai is one of the very few unelectrified lines still left in Finland. These are DR16 locomotives built by either Valmet or Transtech, capable of speeds of up to 140 km per hour. And this is also the only long distance train service in Finland not to run exclusively with electric trains all the way from start to finish. The train is scheduled to sit in Oulu for 50 minutes to allow the shunting operation to take place, which meant a freight train overtook us in the meantime. It also looked like a lot of people opted to bring their car with the train, which is great to see. But as it's cold outside, let's get back into the warm carriage. Where it's now time for the all important toilet review. Nice and simple locking mechanism. The sink is working. There's a soap dispenser as well, plenty of toilet paper and towels. It's one of the more old school toilets, but it's looking clean, so thumbs up. The main drawback of these carriages is that there's no access to a shower, unlike in the double decker ones.
But one thing all Finnish sleeper trains has is a restaurant car. It's open for most of the train journey, except for a few hours during the middle of the night. It comes equipped with a full onboard kitchen, serving hot meals, but there's also plenty of things on offer you can take to go back to your cabin if you so wish. Further down in the train you will also find some of the double decker carriages. Which is also where you will find some seats, either if you're just doing a short hop during the night hours, or if you really want to save a buck, you can do the full overnight journey in them as well. However, when I show you just how much I paid for this ticket, I think you'll agree spending a little more on a cabin really is easily justifiable. A great feature on Finnish long distance trains is that they have lockers, so you could put your backpack in here while you sleep. But honestly, Finland is so safe, it probably wouldn't even matter, but it's nice for peace of mind. And here's what one of the double-decker sleeper cars looks like. Right, time for us to continue for the final stretch up to Tornio. What a beautiful morning for some train travel. We are now approaching Kimi, which is our penultimate stop for my journey today. This is also an important railway junction. As we just north of the station cross over the Kimi river, Just after the river crossing, we leave the electrified main line towards Rovaniemi behind, where most of the Finnish sleeper trains go, and we are now heading up here on the line towards Kolari, which sometimes sees as few as two trains per week. And as we are now approaching Tornio, it's time to talk about fares. I paid just 69 euros for a ticket in this cabin, which I think is amazing value for both what it's long distance transport and overnight accommodation, especially in a Nordic country like Finland. And to make things even better, it's regularly possible to find tickets in a private cabin like this for as low as 49 euros if you book far in advance. Tickets can easily be booked in advance on the VR app or website and shown on your phone. Prices vary based on demand, so book as early as possible. VR does not charge extra to book a lower deck cabin in the slightly better and newer double decker cars, which also grants you access to a communal shower. So I'd probably book that if still available, but if not, I would not hesitate to book again in these blue carriages. Right, I hope you have enjoyed my review of the slightly lesser known Finnish night trains that still, despite their age, are an excellent option. These carriages are mostly found on the Kulai night train, but can also appear during peak times on the more popular Helsinki to Rovaniemi route especially around the holidays in the winter months. Right, welcome to Tornio. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I try to post a new one every Sunday. 
You can also follow me on Twitter, where I post live from my travels. It's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming in the future. I'm now going to walk over to Haparanda in Sweden and catch the Arctic high-speed train down to Luleå. That video is already out on my channel, so just press the card right on screen to be taken there. Thank you so much for watching this video.